Today on Karamo, it's a woman raising a child without any help. Is he giving you money? No, he only gave me like $50 when the baby first came. And a man who says he knew something was off in the hospital room. Holding the baby, I didn't, I just, it just didn't click. There will be a surprising confession. I named the baby. But it's not his baby, baby, though. But listen, it's not his baby, baby though. Here. And a shocking message from a third party. We're getting a ping right now. Yeah. Was his feeling in the hospital room right? or wrong. If you didn't get the feeling when you was holding him, you should have put him down and walked out the hospital. Ah. That's to see. The DNA truth is about to be unlocked. Plus, I couldn't stop crying. It's a situation between a man and his mother. The computer was turned around. It was just shocking. That has forced them to put their whole relationship on the line. I can't apologize. What is the point of apologizing? My guest, Harold, says from the second Kanijah told him that she was pregnant, he had doubts about being the father. Kanijah says she is 100% sure Harold is the father and is tired of him ignoring all of his responsibilities. Today, we'll find out the DNA truth. So welcome Kanijah to the show to get her side of the story. <laughs> Hi, Kanijah. Thank you. Have a hug. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Okay. So, I, I gotta start off. I mean, how does it make you feel that Harold always has these doubts? I'm angry, like, I'm fierce, like, yeah. I'm upset, like, I just, I'm tired. Yeah, um, and how did, how did, let's go back. How did you two start hooking up? Um, I moved to Columbus in, like, October of 2022. Okay. So we was talking for, like, three months mm -hmm. or whatever, and then, we stopped talking and he came to Alabama in like January of 2023. Okay. And then he stayed with me about a week and that's oh. when I got pregnant. Got it, got it. So y'all were never like officially dating or anything. It was just like a quick love affair. No, it's basically like he was just playing with my feelings. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Was he making promises to you? No, it was like he was just talking to me like, like he wanted to talk to me, but every time I got in my feelings, it's like he just disappeared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I got that. Um, so what was Harold's reaction when you told him that you were pregnant? Um, he was cool at first, and then he just flipped out. Like, I guess he started being wishy-washy, like I was lying to him. Mm. So I basically had to tell him, like, I was sending him sonograms, like, everything the doctor told me, I was basically updating him, so. Did Harold deny you were pregnant um, at any point? Yeah, basically I dealt with that, like, my whole pregnancy. Yeah. Okay. And I'm still dealing with it. Well, we have one of the texts between you and Harold that I want everybody to see. It says, you can't even be grown with me about the situation. I'm being grown. You know what's up with me. I'll just wait till November. Ian says, you was lying, and I just know what I did and it's, didn't do. He's saying, I ain't say you lying. Oh, I ain't say you lying. <laughs> OK. I ain't say you lying. OK. I was like, who Ian? OK. <laughs> uh, uh, well, blank, I got pregnant the week your ass was down here. so. You mean ain't nobody trying to just pin no baby on you, and if you want a DNA test, you can get it. Just keep your same energy you have now. Right. Got it. Did Harold tell you that the baby didn't look like him? Yeah, he said him, him and his family, they have resemblance, and the baby don't resemble them at all. Okay, and you posted a side-by-side -side photo of you or Harold and the baby on your Facebook page. Yes, I actually did. Now, uh. tell me, tell me, that baby looked just like him. <laughs> the baby got his whole face. The baby got everything. The baby got everything of him. Got it. The baby don't look like me. So how many times has Harold seen the baby? Twice. Twice. I'm assuming in the hospital? At the hospital and when I took him to Columbus. Wow, okay. Did he ask for the DNA test when he visited the hospital? Yeah, he asked the nurse, and the nurse told him to go to the outpatient clinic, which was downstairs, so he had an opportunity to go downstairs. He said he didn't want to be rude to me. I mean, how are you being rude to me when we already talked about this? Have you tried to test before after that? I mean, yeah, I actually drove two hours to his house to take a CVS test with the baby. The, mind you, the baby's one month old. And what happened? Um, we took it, and then it came back inconclusive, and now we're here. Got it, okay. And you are certain that the baby is Harold's? Yes. Yeah. Like, I know for a fact this is his baby. Like, I'm not going to just tell you that this is your baby and I know this is not your baby. Do you want a relationship with Harold? No. So, so you're not asked for a relationship? No, that, that part is dead. That's dead. How, how old is the child now? Uh, he's two months now, but he'll be three months next week. So this is really recent. Yeah. We're, like, in real time here. Right. Is he stepping up at all? Is he giving you money? No. He only gave me, like, $50 when the baby first came. $50. Yeah. Okay. You're two months in. You're doing this by yourself, and he's not giving you any support. Mm -mm. Okay. 
I mean, of course, like, I, you know, on this, this show, I try to be fair. And so right. I'm hearing your side of the story. And so I think it's time that I hear Harold's side of the story. So everyone, please welcome Harold to the show. Why would I pay anything for that home work That's crazy. Harold, thank you for being here. How y'all doing? I'm good, thank you. So how do you feel about what just was said? Uh, I feel the way I feel. I ain't want to. I ain't want to go through that if it's not mine. Yeah. The baby don't resemble me. Okay. You know, we went through this. She know that I wasn't ready for no baby. She waited a whole month to tell me that she was pregnant. Okay. She didn't give me no chance to do nothing. Okay. What you wanted me to do? I mean, I told you. When they told me that I was pregnant, I called you and I told you. And I told you like... how I felt. Okay, you act like you ain't the only person that didn't want a child. I have a, another child as well, too. I understand that. But okay, I, you act like you, you acting like I didn't, like I really didn't care. Okay. But I, it wasn't that I didn't care. I just, when I, when it got to the point that I felt like I ain't want to take care of a child that's not mine. I want to see, I wanted to see, is the child mine first? I went into the hospital, I grabbed the baby, I held the baby. Harold says he felt it in the hospital room. Like holding the baby, I didn't, I just, it just didn't click. Were his instincts right or wrong? If you didn't get the feeling when you was holding him, you should have put him down and walked out the hospital. Uh. Stay tuned for the DNA outcome. So what was Harold's reaction when you told him that you were pregnant? He was cool at first and then he just flipped out like I was lying to him. I was sending him sonograms, like everything the doctor told me, I was basically updating him. So y'all were never like officially dating or anything? It was just like a quick love affair? No, it's basically like he was just playing with my feelings. Ooh. Yeah. Have you tried to test before? Yeah, I actually drove two hours to his house to take a test. We took it and then it came back inconclusive and now we're here. I didn't want to go through that. If it's not mine, yeah. if the baby don't resemble me, and I want to see, is the child mine first? Yeah, I did the CVS thing. Yeah. It came back, like you said, inconclusive. So why don't you think this child is yours? The baby don't look like me. And then the time. The baby don't look like the you. Timing, the, the baby must so, look like me. In the time. So, please in show the, the picture so, back up. So, what, who that baby look like? No, no, that no, baby no, don't look like me. That baby don't look like me at all. Come on now. Go to the rest of the picture. So this is just, but. What we know is that a baby's face changes, they look more like, there's dominant genes, they look... So exactly. other than that, other than just the fact that he doesn't look like you right now, what other, what other time, things is it? Time and when we did, okay. and, I, and, and I know what I did okay. when we was... So you, I know where I put it at. I so, want to ask you a question. How did you feel after holding, holding the baby after he was born? I, I went to the hospital. I, I went to the hospital, I grabbed the baby, I held the baby. I held the baby. And I was looking. I, I got a, I got a um, one year old son mm -hmm. already. The feeling that I felt like holding the baby, I didn't. I just it just didn't click. So and why would you why would you fill out the pa wanna, why I, would you fill out the paper if you felt like he wasn't your baby? Like why would you stay there? Was, why would you even hold my baby did, if you felt like my you baby was not yours? See when you gave me, I had to get the baby first to get that feeling. But I I'm saying if you baby. didn't get the feeling when you was holding him, you should have put him down and walked out the house, killed him. No, That's common no, sense. No, no. See, okay. That's if I common sense. If I was to do that, then I would have been so enough for what you call it, a deadbeat. Exactly, you haven't helped me if did we, nothing. I did what? with it. I exactly. ain't None of that ain't mine unless okay. I know it's mine. Okay. I'm just paying something. Okay, Karamo, that's please come out with so the then, paper. So you just said it. I don't take care of anything that's not mine I, this is if mine. I don't know it's mine. You had the opportunity in the hospital to go downstairs and take they a DNA test. They didn't say nothing about nothing downstairs. The, you I said the lady the, said the outpatient clinic. The outpatient clinic is downstairs. I went to give her something to eat. I was trying to be slick about the situation. Because like I said, I didn't want to hurt your feelings. Okay. So I, I, went to the, I went to the front of the office. I asked the lady, um, excuse me, ma'am, is there a way that I can get a DNA test real quick? They said, well, we don't do that right here. You have to go to an outpatient clinic. She didn't tell me that the outpatient clinic was downstairs. Okay, got so it. So in my head, I'm thinking like, dang, we got to leave. I got to go do all this. Okay, we'll get we'll across that bridge when I get there. If the baby's mine... Okay, if, if the, the baby, baby is mine, yours, I'm what you gonna do? The same, the same what you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Take care of the baby. Oh, it's, not, okay. it's, 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 it's plain and simple. Okay. People don't I, don't, I don't know people that put kids in the world that don't take care of them. That's old days that you got people that, that, that running around. That's, that's basically Listen, what you did. Not, not on my it's it's I mean, three my, months my, that we, we had to okay. do this. We could have been got the mind. test. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't know, know if he mind. Yeah. Plain and simple. Plain and you simple. You don't know he is. So like I told oh, okay. you, lied one time when you told me you were pregnant. Hold on, there was another time she told you she was pregnant? Did she lie about being pregnant in the past? If I lied to you about being pregnant, why would you start back talking to me again? There will be a surprising confession. I named the baby. But it's not you his baby, baby, though. But listen, it's not his baby, baby though. 
and a shocking message from a third party. We're getting a ping right now. Stay tuned for the DNA outcome. You are the fuck. Get off my stage. Why don't you think this child is yours? The baby don't look like me. It ain't the timing when we did, okay. and, I, and, and I know what I did. How did you feel after holding the baby after he was born? I, I went to the hospital. I held the baby, and I was looking. I got a um, one-year-old son already. The feeling that I felt like holding the baby, I didn't. I just, it just didn't click. Why would you even hold my baby I did. if you felt like what my baby was in church? But like I told oh, you, okay. lied one time when you told me you were pregnant. Hold on, there was another time she told you she was pregnant. And yes, this is the second time. This is when we first started when we talking. we first started. You told me you were pregnant, so I go down there. Exactly. You, you told me you I got was, an abortion. I did, and I left, well, I left, I I left him. I don't had. have to show him Why everything. I left him, and I stopped talking to you. Guess what he did? He Why came to Alabama to and papers? popped up. If I lied to you about being pregnant, why would you start back talking to me again? So why wouldn't, why wouldn't you have just been transparent and showed him the paperwork? Exactly. Why do I have to keep explaining everything to you? Everything I tell That's you, I got to sense. show you everything. I don't have to do that. Why not? Well, I, I don't think, have to I do that. If we well, I, I think in this why case, me? you do owe him the explanation of if you're telling him that I am pregnant, then, and you're saying And guess what he abortion. did? Guess what he did? I don't, I don't want a baby. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm going to know that. I don't, that. I don't want another baby. We okay? explained that. Exactly, but, we doing thi but we're doing things to have a, a baby. Who's not doing we having raw sex. That's what comes with with. The, the Who's not that. doing that? Did you Who, tell her to get an that? abortion? I, I, I'm not ready. For, basically, I'm not ready for a child. But I ain't, the first time I didn't tell her nothing okay, about abortion. Okay, you act like no I was abortion. ready for another but child. I'm already raising one baby by myself. Okay, okay, so why would you want to have another child by me? Then you already okay, raising one by yourself. Okay, and why is you having unprotected sex with me? That's what. Okay, oh, I understand that. That's why are you having unprotected sex with me if you don't want another baby? That's what's going to happen. Okay, okay, I understand that part. Okay, so why would you wait? to tell me that you were pregnant <laughs> when the time is coming. OK, well, that's when okay. I found out that I was pregnant at eight weeks. When I went to the hospital, I called you the day that's that I was at the months. hospital. That's Harold, two months. Harold, let me ask you a question. Did you consider this a relationship? No, they were my buddy. Your buddy, OK. <laughs> do you feel like, do you feel like you could have let her on? I'm saying I can't. What you mean? Like, when you say lean on, like, okay, I'm going to take that as a yes. OK, exactly. check me out. How could you say yeah? Because if we on the phone, we chopping it up, we kicking it, we, we chilling. What's... Chopping it, kicking it, all those so, but, mean, but, but, those but, are synonyms when to you me say for like, hey, on. we're building something potentially. But when you say, lean, no, I can do that with a friend. You could, you could. But when the thing, difference with a friend is that there's no intimacy involved. And so, you got a point. Okay. Uh, did you tell Kanaja to give the baby your last name? Yeah, we, we, we came to an agree. Like, you know, we, we talked. I named the baby. But it's not you his baby, baby, though. But listen, it's not the baby his baby, though. Here. It's not Just his listen. baby. Yeah. Okay, listen. I would like the baby name to be, if it was mine, you know, I would like the baby name to be such, 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 such. She changed the name, you know what I'm saying? But gave the baby my last name still. You know, but then my heart, with me being the person okay, I'm here. the middle name you pick and your last name. But me being the person I'm in, like she said, like, okay, you gonna say leading her on? We were still conversating. So when she texted me that morning on the way to school, when she called me, FaceTimed me with the baby, I was like, ooh. Dang, I was telling my brother, like, dang, bro, she had the baby. When I get out of school, bro, I'm going straight to the hospital. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? My intentions was to go straight to the hospital and tell these people, can y'all do that? I wanted to do that then. I wouldn't even ask them people yeah. about that if I, was, if I wasn't concerned. I got to tell you this. I will see, I do see a bit of your perspective that, like, I do hear in there the caring nature. I'm not going to lie to you. That's what when I'm saying. When you're saying, like, I, I, I do hear it. You're like, you're in bed. You just had the child. I'm trying to do this on the slow, on the, on the low so I don't disrespect you. I don't make you feel uncomfortable. We know this exactly. could be I get it. I understand Because we don't have that. bad terms. We, to, 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 this might make it, well, you know, I don't know how, her, how she feels, but yeah. we was never on bad terms. Yeah, OK. I get that. I get that. I get never that. on bad terms. Like, only thing that's going on now is the DNA test mm -hmm. for this child. Yeah. OK, if the child is mine, I'm going to do what I got to do. A hundred percent. And to the end, if it's not, it's to the end, it, it is what it is. I'm going to ask you, what has it been like raising your child without any help? It's hard. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, it's, I'm being a mama and the daddy. Like I'm, he can't even tell me what size the baby wear, like what, what, what the baby do or none of that. Like I'm in, I'm up in the middle of the night with the baby. Like I'm taking the baby to the doctor's appointments. I don't get no sleep. Like it's, 
it's just hard. Like, you Got can't it. do that. I have to ask you, is there any possibility there could be any other man? Because I'm looking at the timeline. You said three months from when y'all were dating. Um, no. into the time That's the question pregnant. I always no. ask. I ain't mean to cut you out. No, no. This, this That's yours. the question I always no. ask. Could you keep it real? No. Is it any he other person? I was not. I don't know. know. How the hell yes, I, yes, yes. I know? Because how, how can I'm I, I just want to stay? Okay. You, I'm in you Georgia. Came, you in Alabama. Okay. I was eight I was weeks there a pregnant week. at, in, in February. That's when I found out, like, going on to the end of February, that's when I found out that, that, I, that I was pregnant. Uh -huh. He came to stay with me in January at the end of... Matter of fact, my cycle had just went off. You know, you're supposed to wait like a couple mm -hmm, couple mm -hmm, weeks later mm -hmm. to even have sex. So I already I don't know. There was one supposed to know that. I don't know. I already mm -hmm. knew. So I'm not crazy. Uh, like I, I matched the timing up. Like it's not no it's not no doubt. Like I'm why would I come on to And so there was no other men you were intimate during no. with that at the time? No. Okay, okay. Do you consider yourself to be a good father? Yeah, most definitely. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. I believe that. Exactly. Yeah, I believe that. Well, it looks like we're getting a ping right now. Um <laughs> And it's from Harold's brother, Chris. What does he have to say? Harold's brother has serious doubts. So I know for sure he's not the father. How he know for sure that he's the father? He was sleeping with me. Is Harold the father of her child or not? Well, I think it's time for the DNA outcome. <laughs> the DNA truth is about to be unlocked. Tell Kanaja to give the baby your last name. I named the baby, but it's not you his baby, baby though. Listen, it's not his baby, baby though. I have to ask you: Is there any possibility there could be any other man? That's the question I always no. ask. Could you keep it real? And so there was no other men you were intimate during no. with that at the time. No. Okay. Well, it looks like we're getting a ping right now, um, and it's from Harold's brother Chris. What does he have to say? My name is Chris. I'm, I'm Harold's brother. I've seen numerous pictures of the child. And the child looked nothing like any of us, from his son to our son, nephews. The baby does not look like my brother at all. And I know he wasn't just deny a child because he have another child that he, he act he act the father. So I know he wouldn't disclaim a child. Plus, he's always wanted kids. So I know for sure he's not the father. How he know for sure that he's the father? He mother was sleeping with me. I don't know. That's just the way he feels. That's just the way he feels. He feels the same way I feel. The baby don't so, resemble so, nothing. So your whole family okay. has doubts about this. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. I will say about this is that I'm glad that this is the beginning and that the child is not one, two, three. Yes, I understand sir. how hard it has been for you, but at least this hasn't gone on three years where now you can be labeled someone who's really, you know, um, delinquent and not doing what they need to do, and that you'll get answers soon. So are you prepared to step up if this baby does turn out to be yours? Most definitely. Okay. Why not? I get it. I mean, well, every... <laughs> Only reason I'm saying that is because you did say uh, your mama, you weren't you weren't ready for another baby. You said I that really you see I, my child, my first child is just one. He'll be two next month. I broke down to her, explained to her everything the first time when she lied about the baby. That's how I feel. Yeah. When she said that about the first child and the abortion. Good she job. knew exactly how I felt about this situation. Yeah. So if you was to, when she told me she was pregnant, okay, cool. I was like, dang, we can't do this, such, 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 because you know I, ain't, I don't want no more, I don't want no more kids. If you felt like that, you shouldn't have said nothing to me. You shouldn't you have, called you should, me. You, no, you called me trying to be cool with me. You shouldn't even you said called that. Me you when shouldn't you even said, let me help you name pregnant. the baby. You shouldn't have came to the that's hospital. After, you shouldn't have did none of that. You after. feel like this in your heart, you shouldn't have came around my baby, period. You shouldn't have came around him at all. How would I know? How you shouldn't have came around him. If you felt like that, you shouldn't have came around till you got a DNA test. All right, perfect. Well, I think it's time for the DNA outcome. I mean, in this envelope is the DNA truth that you all have been waiting for to yes, answer sir. the question, if this is your child, Harold, um, this is not my truth to open. This is your truth to open. Yes, sir. And since you have the questions, I'm giving it to you. Yes, if sir. you could please read it out loud for us. Most definitely. Whew. Were his feelings in the hospital room right or wrong? Everyone will see the DNA truth unlocked next. You are the father. Get off my stage. <laughs> Are you
Are you prepared to step up if this baby does turn out to be yours? Most definitely. Only reason I'm saying that is because you did say you weren't you weren't ready for another baby. You said I really see I, my child. My first child is just one. He'll be two next month. If okay. you felt like that, you shouldn't have said nothing to me. You when shouldn't you even said, said let me help, help you name the baby. You shouldn't have came to the that's hospital. After, you shouldn't have did none of that. If you feel after. like this in your heart, you shouldn't have came around my baby. Period. You shouldn't have came around him at all. Well, I think it's time for the DNA outcome. This is not my truth to open. This is your truth to open. Yes, and since you have the questions, I'm giving it to you. Oh, if you could please read it out loud for us. I was definitely. The collar is not your biological son. Oh! Where, where can I go? There is not no way. Stop like, it's, I wasn't mad. sleeping it's with hard. nobody else. Like, um, got me coming down here for all that, man. Like, there is no way. Let me How get you my stuff. This? There's no way, like, I wasn't sleeping with nobody else. Like, I know for a fact, Th like... This would make a little bit more sense of why the other test came out inconclusive. There, I, I'm gonna tell you this, as I've told people on the show before, I'm here to support you. There has to be something we can figure yeah. that out. Um, how are you feeling right now? I'm cool. I just, like I told her, that she should've... Like, I know she I just lied. I didn't lie. I Basically, wasn't sleeping with nobody else. You want to sleep I wasn't. I know for a fact. I, I ah. did this too many times. Like, I, I went back. That, I wasn't talking I to nobody that, else. I like, asked you that every day. Every time we talk, I asked you that, bro. Do you know that, though. Oh. I asked you that, bro. I don't want to talk about this no more. Um, I asked you that, bro. She, she's embarrassed right now. She's embarrassed right now. But I'm embarrassed because I'm supposed to be here doing this, period, I it. man. I get it. No, no. I, listen, I get it. I get it. I get it. Oh, man. I get it. I get it. What, what I will say to you, what I will say to you is, I think this is an opportunity for you, because I can hear you going to school. I can see what you're trying to do with your kids. I see you in a moment of growth right now. I just and lost a brother three days ago. I'm sorry. To gunfire. Yeah. And this was, he was, he, he wanted me to do this. He was like, bro, go if you, whatever you got to do, bro, just gonna make sure the child, see the child you are, bro. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, but she knew that, though, bro. I always asked her, the, the question you just asked her, the only question, I wouldn't even been here if the only question what you just asked her was you sleeping with anybody else. Yeah. Just keep it real with me so we can know. This is a learning opportunity for you to understand, like, when you play with people's emotions, sometimes things get confused. Yes, sir. And, like, you, you grown. Yes, sir. You know it. She said it. You had unprotected sex with her while telling her, like, oh, we kicking it. There's, there's mixed messages. Yes, sir. This is the result. So as you go through here and you have other relationships with other women, I just want you to be better. Yes, sir. Let this be the relationship that teaches you to be better. Yes, sir. You understand? I'm glad that you're on a path. I'm sorry for you grieving right now. I'm glad you're on a path with school and everything. Yes, I wish you the best of luck. Yes, sir. Seriously, I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> what I want to do here is be a resource and a support, not a judgment, not anything. If there is someone else that you would like to contact, we can contact them, we can support you. I want you to have the support you deserve as a young mother. Like, I was sure that it was him. Like, when I did the timing back to when I got pregnant all the way to when I had the baby, like, I don't, I wasn't, I even had a cycle. That's why I'm not understanding, like. I understand you're in shock and you're processing this because a lot of that is going through. But at some point, when you have some time to process this and you really think about it, you're gonna to have to be able to really think about who could have come before your cycle or who maybe after that time period, right before you found out that you had a relationship with. Because at the end of the day, you do deserve support. Mm -hmm. And you also, your child deserves to have this information so that they know who their father is. I wish you the best of luck. I'm here for you, okay? Okay. I'm here for you. Just let me know, all right? Good luck now. I hope to hear from you, okay? Okay. Yeah. Look at me, man. Look at me, bro. Look, stand up. What? What you mean? Stand up. Uh, that's not right, what you bro. Mean, bro. Listen, bro. It's not. Listen, bro. Listen, bro. If you didn't know, you didn't know. Like, but if we were dealing with somebody else, you should have just said it, though. That's, bro, the, that's I the only wasn't. question I asked you, bro. Me and my cousin, I went back. I did the mail too many times. But you got to find it. You got to see what's going on. You know what I'm saying? I know you hurt. Don't feel like you alone, bro. That's all I want you to know. Don't feel like you alone. Shoot, you got you got to handle it anyway. Whatever, whatever going on, bro. I couldn't stop crying. It's a situation between a man and his mother. The computer was turned around. It was just shocking. That has forced them to put their whole relationship on the line. I can't apologize. What is the point of apologizing?
Dakota says he spent his whole life trying to achieve success. He made money beyond his wildest dreams, and he even bought his mother a new house. But the only thing he couldn't buy was his mother's love. Sadly, Dakota says he's been rejected by his mother since he was 13 years old because he's gay. Let's hear his side of the story. So everyone, please welcome Dakota to the show. <laughs> Nice to meet you, Dakota. Thanks for being here. Of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So I got to go back. What happened when you were 13? Oh, I like the shoes. Thank you. So uh, a lot happened when I was 13. When I was 13, I actually was outed uh, by a family member of mine. Yeah. We were sitting uh, at a dinner table, and this person found explicit content on my computer. I was uh -huh. 13 and exploring, you know, the world, yeah, let's call yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and then this person took my computer, turned it around to my whole family, mm -hmm. and that's how I was forced uh, out. Mm, mm. And, and how did your mom react at that moment? She seemed shocked. Everybody seemed shocked. But what happened was she then kind of brought me outside and I felt started berating me. like. Mm. And when I say that, I mean asking a lot of questions that at 13 you're not prepared to answer. Mm. And I feel that if I was straight and the same thing happened, you know, people say things all the time, oh, give kids magazines and all this sort of stuff. And I feel like it was because I was gay, not because of the content, that this became such a big deal mm. and such an eruption. It kind of was the first time I felt unprotected by my mom mm. in this whole thing. And I feel like as adults, you have the ability to take these situations and reframe the shame is maybe what I, how I would describe it. Yeah. And it really, it, you know, that was, that's, that's, was the beginning of a series of events that left me feeling that same way. Was your relationship with your mom good before that? Yeah, it, me and my mom were like best of friends. My father died when I was three. So it was really me and my mom that were left with each other. I feel like it completely reframed our, our relationship mm. because a lot of what happened afterwards, the, you know, sometimes like the name calling and, and some of the other things that would happen really just left me feeling like parentless mm. sometimes. Mm. Got it. And what was it like living in the house afterwards, after this moment? Yeah, it was difficult because I feel like my mom harbored a lot of resentment towards me. Uh -huh. And so the way it enacted itself was me feeling very isolated and alone. And then I think it just, again, it kind of went on. I was, I actually, when I went to college for my the first week I was in college, I was actually sexually assaulted while I was there. Whoa. So, you know, then my mom, so it, it, you know, it, it, you, I would say it gets better, but you know, it's, it's yeah. always something that sticks yeah. with you. Um, but when that happened and I was thinking of who to call, I actually called my aunt and I didn't call my mom because mm. I felt like she would again blame this, you know, these tropes of gay men as promiscuous and like that kind of mentality. Do you feel like she resents you? I think my mom mourns a version of our life that she wishes she would have. Mm. So how did you cope with this isolation in that time? I, you know, some people turn to all kinds of things. For me, it was really turning to school. I went to Brown, I went to Harvard, I worked on Wall Street. Uh -huh. I did all these things. So it, thank you, thank you. But for me, you You're know, single? Because I got a couple of homeboys I hook you up with, no. okay? <laughs> That's all the stuff that happened. But for me, that comes with a lot of hurt because that was my reaction to feeling like I was so alone. It was trying to overcompensate in these other ways because when it was scholastic achievement, everything was great. My mom would be happy. You know, when I graduated, I was going to Brown. Big celebration party, but it's always about those things. And it always loops back to this idea of like my mom being this great mom and all these accomplishments, and then it just minimizes my experience, which was really a flawed childhood, yeah. you know, in a lot of ways. Listen, you preach it to the choir. Why do you think I got a talk show? <laughs> Sorry. I tell, no, you preach it to the choir. I tell people all the time. People are like, what prepares me? I'm like, trauma? <laughs> yeah, trauma. Let it's me tell real. You, you, have, you have a daddy that's, uh, who only applauds you when you're successful. You're going to find out how to be <laughs> successful because you're searching for that love. You know, we can joke about it now because we made it, but it, we've all done that. We respond to, like, the love we didn't get in a certain way. And I'm like, for me, it was the same thing. Yeah. I was like oh, so you don't want to acknowledge my, me being gay, you don't want to acknowledge these things I'm going through, but you do acknowledge when I get a good grade mm -hmm. or when I achieve or when something goes well, so let me keep achieving to make, to make me feel like I'm getting the love that I should have just gotten unconditionally. Absolutely. So I understand that, I get, I get that. Um, Thank you for validating that. Yeah, I get it, I understand it, you're welcome. So what do you need from your mom today? I need my mom to stop focusing on making herself feel better about the mother she was 
and focus on validating and affirming my feelings and where I stand so I can heal. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like what happens is every time we engage in these conversations, it flips to, well, I was crying too, I was sad too, I was this too. And sometimes I talk to my mom about this concept of like emotional immaturity, which mm -hmm. is a very new term that I've kind of started, but it's like my mom's inability to to just accept and stand in who she was mm -hmm. limits her from validating who I am and where I am and what happened to me, you know? Got it. Well, um, thank you for being clear about that. Let's hear what your mother has to say about this. So everyone, please welcome TJ to the show. Hi, TJ. You look absolutely beautiful. How are you it's doing? It's a pleasure to meet nice you. Nice to meet you as How well. Doing okay, man. Yeah, doing okay. Awesome. Um, so, how do you feel about what was said? Whew, where do I start? Yes. Okay, so when I had just came home from work, and his brother and his his family were at the house, we were in the process of getting ready to celebrate Dakota's thirteenth birthday. Mm -hmm. As soon as I walked in the house, the computer was turned around and it was gay porn. I was shocked. Mm -hmm. I wasn't prepared for that. Yeah. And then too, in all honesty, I'm a baby boomer. That's not what we did. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, it, if it was, then it was talked about behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. You know, that wasn't something that we just openly, ex you know, my parents didn't accept it. It was just shocking. Mm -hmm. And so, I didn't really know what to do. I couldn't stop crying. Mm -hmm. Because what I knew was that my son was a black man. And not just a black man, but now a black gay man. I knew what society would do to him. Mm -hmm. Just eat him up and spit him up. I don't have a problem with sexuality. It's just that I don't want it for him. His mother's true feelings will come out next. He robbed me of a daughter-in-law. Can this relationship be saved? I am whole. I will have a family that is whole. Or is this generation gap just too big? But it's just the way I was raised. I can't apologize. What is the point of apologizing? says he spent his whole life trying to achieve success, but the only thing he couldn't buy was his mother's love. Sadly, Dakota says he's been rejected by his mother since he was 13 years old because he's gay. I feel like it was because I was gay, not because of the content, that this became such a big deal and such an eruption. It kind of was the first time I felt unprotected by my mom. I think my mom mourns a version of our life that she wishes she would have. It was just shocking. Mm -hmm. My son was a black man. And not just a black man, but now a black gay man. I knew what society would do to him. I don't have a problem with sexuality. It's just that I don't want it for him. Can I, can I, I, I really try not to interject. You, you're, you, oh, you're, you are entitled to feel how you feel and your feelings are valid for you and I accept that. My difficulty is that we're having a conversation about we're here to talk about the heal these, these elements, right? Mm -hmm. And it always shifts back to me, 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 me with my mom. Mm -hmm. I felt this way. What did I experience? I didn't know this, I didn't know that. And she said, the world was gonna chew you up and spit you out. And okay. look at me today. Okay. It didn't. So can you just accept that maybe you okay. have the wrong view and validate that that... I, and, you, and I will accept it. I own it. And I hear what you're saying. And I apologize. And I've been apologizing for years. Do you think he's forgiven you? No. You flipped our parent-child relationship on its head when you said the things you said to me when I was that age. What did, you, well, what did well, your mother say to you? Let's just say I raised you to be a man and not gay. I'll just say, you know, let's just, I'll, I'll put it like that. Was she saying uh, the F word? It wasn't the F word, but variations. You know, these, variant. you know, this is, this is, you know, these sort of things, they, they sting you. I apologize. I, I accept that, but I, you've said you apologize for that before too, but then still sit here and say, well, I can't imagine ever talking to my mom like this. Well. You're, you're, it's not a normal parent-child dynamic, not to mention that because you were a single mom, I had to take on a lot more as a child. And so our whole relationship is more of a partnership than a parentship, is what I would say. Do you feel like it's more of a partnership? 
Well, when his dad passed at three, I told him, I said, we're partners. I said, mm -hmm. and let me tell you why we're partners. I said, because what I need you to do is I need you to empower your brain. I didn't want him going down the same path his dad went down. So my whole thing was to throw everything I had behind him mm -hmm. so that he could be intelligent, smart, exposing him to everything I could in the world. Do you feel like you treated him differently? I did. Mm -hmm. I own that. I did. Dakota, in my opinion, he robbed me of a daughter-in-law that I could torture, mm -hmm. that I could literally torture. That's, that is... And, and, I know, I know, but that's just how I am, Dakota. I'm just being honest with you. And I told you that he robbed me of a, a daughter-in-law of the, the, the typical, the typical family. You know, um, grandkids. And I know he said he's, he's going to have grandkids. And God knows I can't wait. You already make my family that's for the future for me feel like it's less than. No, Dakota. It does. Dakota, it's not less than. It's, Dakota, it's not that. less than. That is her. No, it's because not. Because you're saying, Rob, and I know that you're, it's minimizing. And I, I am whole. I will have a family that is whole. <laughs> Nothing about me or the family that I have is anything less than some idea that you have in your mind about what it should be. Dakota, I apologize. I can't apologize. You keep I apologizing and you keep saying the same stuff. So it's, it's, what is the point of apologizing? Because, what is the because point I just want us to move forward. That's well, all I want. I think you, I just want us to move forward. It's really hard to move forward with the things that you say. It's really hard to move forward. Do you understand how the words that you're saying, how they're, why they're triggering him and hurting him? I do. Okay. I do. So from your perspective, why do you think you're saying that? Because I want to know. I, I, that's what I've always said. You know, it's, it's not that I'm trying to trigger him or hurt him because I'm not. I'm not trying to do that, mm -hmm. but it's just the way I was raised and what I know. Yeah. It's not, you know, when you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, I never even heard of emotional immaturity. I never even heard of some <laughs> of these terms. Mm -hmm. Until reason, I'm like, what the heck is that hell? Mm -hmm. You know? I and think so it's important that I, that we come here and the reason why we're here is because I think, I don't, and I don't feel like you're alone. I think there are other kids and families out there with the same exact issues. I think it's just not talked about a lot. It's a lot to come talk about this here. No, I, appreciate, I appreciate both of your bravery because it, the truth of the matter is, is that it is. There's two different generations that we're looking at here who are speaking and saying that we love each other and we want to support each other, but there's a generation that didn't have the knowledge that many of us have. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. Um, TJ, I want you to get this. I'm going to use the language you've said back to you so you can understand that when you say things to him, it robs him of his emotions, it robs him of his dreams. Do you see that? Because like, you saying like- I do now. You do now. Because like, I understand. And Not I can, just I today. Can... I'm talking about maybe Period. a couple of weeks ago. Got it, you started I to get started it. I started getting it. Yeah, I got it. Because the thing is, is that, and I appreciate you expressing that point for me, and I understand how it triggered you. And I understand what you're saying you need to your mom. You need her to, I want you to tell her just clearly one more time what you need. I need you to stop trying to reframe your motherhood in my adolescence and pu you know, puberty times, except that it was flawed, and stop trying to make excuses for it and for yourself in this active journey towards us moving forward. Moments like what just happened, put us back. Can you take us back? So can you do that? Can you? I can. You can. So from now on, the past, no more like, I'm going to justify, I'm going to explain, I'm just going to acknowledge it was not right. I, I can definitely do that. Okay. I can, I can, de can do because I'm, I'm here to move forward, not mm -hmm. to go back. Yeah. I, Same. I got, Same. I got to tell you something, though. Same. Yeah. I got to, hold on, I got to tell you something, though. Um, amidst the hurt, which is very valid, I have to acknowledge, you actually have a mother who's actually trying to grow. Agreed. And Agreed. one of the things that I think when it comes to this generations, different generations, is that we want them to grow at our pace. Mm. And we don't realize that she has to grow at her pace. Absolutely. And I think one of the things that as she's making this commitment, I would ask you to make a commitment mm. to give her a little bit more grace in her growth. I received that. I'll do that. I, I received that.
Listen, I, I'm, I hope you feel heard. I do. Do you feel as if this was the first step in y'all getting somewhere? I absolutely do, and good. I thank you for it. Yeah, you're welcome. Do you feel good? Absolutely. Good, thank good, you so good. much. I wish y'all the best of luck. There's a lot of love here. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Everyone, thank you for being with us. Make sure to come back next time, friends, so we can keep talking and growing. I love you all.